min sharuri anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina faman yahdihillah fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlilhu fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah wa huwal khatimul anbiya'i wal mursalin wa ba'd dear brothers dear sisters we greet you first with the greeting words of peace and paradise assalamu alaykum this is interpreted from our original language of Arabic into English as follows. That surely all praise is for Allah. We praise him, we seek his help, we ask his forgiveness, and it is on Allah alone that we rely. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils of ourselves and our own bad deeds. For there is not one that could misguide the one that Allah has guided, as for the one that Allah has left astray there is no one to guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah without partner, la sharika lah. And we further bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, he is the prophet of Allah. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. We greet you again with the greeting words of peace and paradise, at tahiyatul jannah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers, Dear sisters, we first want to know that this is our weekly day of gathering. This is Yom al Jumu'ah. This is the day in which the Muslims are gathering across the country, across the world, across all of our neighborhoods for what we have termed the largest social gathering in human uh, activities every week. Every week, the Muslims come together to not only socialize, but to understand the issues that are facing the Muslim community worldwide and in our very own masajid and communities. We are here as a symbol of our unity. And part of that symbol is the gathering itself, the coming together physically. For Allah Ta'ala has said in the Quran, Fasa'u ila dhikrillah, rush or hasten, hurry to the remembrance of Allah. And praise be to Allah, all that are present today have put that in the forefront of their mind. We have rushed to the remembrance of Allah. We have hastened to the remembrance of Allah. And we have not allowed anything to discourage or take us off of that remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we can do that everywhere, praise be to Allah. For Allah ta'ala has said the entire earth is his mosque. This whole earth is his message. So if we were to have two, or three, or four, this is a jama'ah, a community gathering. And praise be to Allah, this weekend we have had many activities. And we are having many activities today as well in uh, the suburbs with a, a big convention. So there are just a few of us here, but we want to remind ourselves that we are family. And the first thing that I would like to ask us to do is to gather in together. If you can, don't move your chairs or anything, but our sisters, it's okay to be as comfortable as you can. You don't have to move from the wall if it's helping. But if we gather in and feel one another's presence, this is very important to the reality of the symbol, the science behind Al Jumu'ah, the gathering, that we feel each other's spirit, that we feel one another as brother and sister, lining up in ranks, no matter where it is that we have come from, for we have all come from different spaces and places. We may look at each other and see someone who looks like our brother. We may look at each other and see someone who may look like they're from another place. But if we feel one another, we will recognize the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For he has said that where there are two or more gathered, he is present. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us life in this very gathering. He is giving us an opportunity for not only us to remind ourselves of his glory, to remind ourselves of our basic nature and desire to worship him, but to remind us, brothers and sisters, that we are brothers and sisters. In the way or in the belief of Allah. Now, we today, our topic, inshallah, uh, we'll discuss the unity of our united family. For we 
are one community. One community that has been raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One family, one nation that has been raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a example, an example for all of the worlds, for the whole entire planet, for all of humanity, regardless of faith, regardless of politics, regardless of whatever ideology or thoughts that people have about what life should be like, there is to be a community that comes out of all of humanity and establishes what is good so that the rest of humanity can learn from it. For Allah Ta'ala has said, Ya ayyuhal nasu, Ya ayyuhal nasu attaqu rabbukum, attaqu rabbakum, alladhi khalaqakum min nafsun wahida, wa khalaqakum, wa khalaqa minha zawajaha, wa bathan minha ma rajalan kathira wa nisa. For Allah Ta'ala has said, O oh people, keep your duty to your Lord, who created you from a single being. Stop there. For Allah Ta'ala has said, we have all come from one being, one nafs, nafsun wahida. This, brothers and sisters, is a sign of our filial connection, a sign of our being a brother and a sister to one another. For Allah Ta'ala has continued in this verse saying, keep your duty to your Lord who created you from a single being and created its mate of the same kind and, separate and spread from these two many men and women. And keep your duty to Allah by whom you demand one of another your rights and to the ties of relationship. Surely Allah is ever watcher over what you do. Allah Ta'ala continues in this verse by saying, bihi wal arham. This, this word wal arham, wa bihi wal arham. This is asking, Allah is saying that you are asking one another about your rights of relationship, bil arham. Now, relationship here means uh, in the Arabic word rahima, from the word womb, that we literally share the same womb. Every one of us have come from the same womb of evolution into the present being that we are today. This, brothers and sisters, has made it so that there is a duty, there's taqwa involved, there is a duty, a consciousness, a uh, right that we have between one another. A son for his child. A child has a right over his father. A father has a right over his child. A mother, likewise, has a right over her child, her son or daughter. The husband over the wife, the wife over the husband. We all have rights between one another that we, what? demand. We don't ask for them. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in the Quran that the only way that we are differentiated from one another is through the reality of our ability to demonstrate our what? Taqwa. Our ability to show our duty, our regard, our consciousness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that doesn't come from a lot of rakahs, a lot of salah. Yes, that is a sign of it. This is a sign of it. But Allah Ta'ala has said in Surah Al-Ma'un, Woe to the salah makers, those who make the salah, but are not mindful or not mindful of their kindness and daily needs of the people. So it says in this surah, وَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ أَلَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ أَلَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاءُونَ وَيَمْنَعُونَ الْمَاعُونَ Woe to the praying ones who are unmindful of their prayer. Now Allah, this sounds like an uh, oxymoron, right? That woe to the praying ones, to the ones that are praying, that are unmindful of their prayers. 
If you're praying, wouldn't it be that you're mindful of the time and the salah itself? But Allah is not speaking of the motion of prayer. He's speaking of the symbol of prayer. What does salah mean when we come to gather like this? What should salah mean to the Muslim as it relates to the answer for his prayer? Allah says in this verse, الَّذِينَ هُمْ يُرَاءُونَ الْمَاعُونَ who do good to be seen and refrain from acts of kindness. The salah is to remind us of the acts of kindness, not just to the believer, not just to the believer or our brother and sister, but all who have come from this arham, this single essence that has put us all, all in a space and place where we demand rights over one another. So let us, brothers and sisters, be very, very, very careful with the rights between ourselves, the rights over the youth for the elder. The elder has rights over the youth. This is part of adab and mannerisms, akhlaq, the character of a Muslim. And it should not be known that you are a Muslim simply because you are making the salah, because you are praying. Oh, I see that brother has a scab on his forehead. He has prayed so much, he has, must have rubbed his head so hard into the uh, sijada, into the prayer rug, that he's making prayer so much, he must be very holy. Should the scab on your head or the loss of some skin on the head be a mark of your piousness? a mark of your ability to represent yourself as a worshiper of Allah? Or should your works and those who follow in the path of guidance and the light that Allah has given you, that you have set up, allows others to follow into that guidance? That should be the mark, the mark of a true believer, is that he is attractive, she is attractive, she is a light, he is a light amidst the darkness. Not that we are simply attracting some by the, the difference that may be seen in the mode of prayer, the salah. It's a beautiful thing to watch because it is, in reality, the symbol not only of our way of submission to Allah, but it is, in reality, a body language that all of humanity can recognize. Oh, no one will ask, is that brother praying? What is that that he's doing there? No, everyone knows. It does not matter what religion you are from, what language you may speak, all know when the Muslim is making salah. Takbir. Takbir. What a beautiful symbol to be known by among humanity is by bowing our heads to the ground when the shaitan, Iblis, did not. We are known for our submission as Muslims in a symbol of salah. But are we known, are we known for our submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it means standing up against tyrants, when it means standing up against the evils of ourselves, the injustices that we do to our own selves and our communities. Let us, brothers and sisters, be among those who are reflective of the reality of our ibadat, our worship. What is the worship about? It is about the oneness of our community. It is about the oneness of our nation, the oneness of our family. So Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, highly glorified is he, is he. He has made us from a single being and set us in the earth to be tribes and nations. That we spring from one self, all types of reflections of creation and types of experiences in our individual lives as people and tribes. We as a single family with diverse needs and interests are to get to know and understand one another so that we may be part of 
the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For it is the service to humanity that is paramount in the message of the Quran and is considered part of worship in our faith, period. It is service that is part of worship in our faith, not simply the salah. So let us not, brothers and sisters, become among those who are ritualistic, those who have set up our activities to show a difference between us and other peoples of faith, or between us and other people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must in this time take the stance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who, when he was a young man, like some of the young men on the front row here, before he became a uh, prophet, before Allah revealed to him the Holy Quran, he had the, the makeup of justice in his heart. He joined into a alliance known as Hilf al-Fudul. This alliance was to protect the weak that were being conquered, that were being robbed, the women of society that were being raped. It was to protect the weak among society that were weak due to the lack of money and financial support, or they were also weak due to their tribal associations. What did the Prophet subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? He joined this alliance that would allow the protection of these weak individuals in society and weak tribes. Are we going beyond our daily duty as Muslims to join into alliances with our brothers and our sisters? not just in faith, but beyond our faith tradition to fight for what is good and to establish what is right in this society? Or are we closing ourselves off into a small community of chosen ones who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe, think has chosen us and will protect us from the wrath of the fire, the wrath of this last day? No, brothers and sisters, we are to seek refuge in Allah. Na'udhu billah, that we seek refuge in Allah, not the masjid, not na'udhu bil masjid. <laughs> we don't seek refuge in the masjid. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't, takbir, takbir. There is refuge in this place. It is very safe for us, for we, are teaching our beloved Muslim society as well. When you visit Masjid Maryam, you come into this masjid and you receive what is considered a check. We not only check you for what we consider contraband or those things that should not be on the holy grounds of a masjid, but we check for attitude. We check for your basic uh, mannerism as a Muslim. But most of all, this check is established for peace, we look in this society, brothers and sisters, the society that we call America, that we say is a society supposedly of safety to be who you are, to choose your own religion, yet we find people of color, black, shot down in their places of worship. We find among the Hindu community who were mistaken to be Muslim, who just because they wore turbans have been shot down in their temples. Brothers and sisters, we find masajid or mosques in this very city, if we do our research, that have bullet holes in them, that have had mobs of people surround the masjid and chant that they should not be in the community. Brothers and sisters, this is a time in which, if we believe it or not, we are like a frog. A frog is a cold-blooded animal and therefore does not sense the change of temperature in its surrounding unless it is a high temperature. So if we've heard the old adage of slowly boiling a frog until it dies, that its frog does not feel the change of the temperature of, of, of its surroundings if it's getting hotter slowly. 
We are in that pot, brothers and sisters, where the temperature is rising and we are cold to one another and we are slowly dying because we are not feeling the warmth of our brother and sister. Takbir. So let us be aware of the enemy. Let us be aware of the pot. Let us be aware of the atmosphere that we are in so that we may stand true to our faith, not just in action of our ibadah or our worship, but true to our faith in the demonstration of our taqwa, in the demonstration of our courage to stand against tyranny when we see it. So let us remind ourselves that this is a time for us to establish peace, to establish justice, and to establish it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadhi wa astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. This is what I've said. May Allah forgive me if I've made any mistake. We will now make short dua and continue the second portion of our khutbah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'een wa ba'd. Dear brothers, dear sisters, we are discussing the unity of our nation, our family, and our community. Allah Ta'ala has said in the Quran, and be not like those who became divided and disagreed after clear arguments had come to them, and for them, is a grievous chastisement. Brothers and sisters, the payment for our disagreement and division is the chastisement of Allah. You didn't hear me. <laughs> Astaghfirullah, oh Allah, forgive us. The payment for disagreement and division is the chastisement of Allah. And how does the chastisement of Allah manifest itself? We can see the chastisement among our families. We can see the chastisement in our communities, in our nation, and in the entire Islamic world. We see the weakening of the heart of the Muslim world and the fear of men and political gain. We see the weakness in our families and ourselves that develops as anxiety, as grief, are we grieving over things that are in Allah's control? Are we having anxiety over things that are in Allah's control? We see this chastisement as loss of our property, our lives, and to the injustices that exist within ourselves and society as a whole. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala checks a people through another people. So if we have fallen off the path, there is someone else, another people, that will push you back to that path, that will push you back into what we know as the path of the will of Allah. Try swimming upstream from the will of Allah. This will be a stream or a path that is impossible, brothers and sisters. So let us, in this time, remind ourselves not to be among those who are lost, the khusirin, let us remind ourselves that through patience, through our patience in our disagreement and our ability to understand that we have not put on the robe of judge, the robe of Allah, to disagree and split hairs with our brothers and sisters over small things when we must unite over the large issues that we are facing as a community. So Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, the best ummah, the best nation is raised or ukhrijat from or for humanity. It mentions in this ayah, you are the best nation raised up for men. You enjoin good and forbid evil and you believe in Allah. And if the people of the book had believed, it would have been better for them. Some of them are believers, but most of them are transgressors. Some of them are believers, brothers and sisters, but most are transgressors. This is Allah speaking to the believer. 
This is Allah letting you know that you, even though you claim Islam, you're not among the absolute only believers on the planet. Some of us think we have joined into a group and have become the chosen ones, as we've mentioned. No, 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 no. Allah says some of them are believers, but most of them are transgressors. The important portion that we would like to point out here before we close. Kuntum khayrun ummatin ukhrijat linnas. That you are the best nation raised up for men. You enjoin good and forbid evil and you believe in Allah. This word, ukhrijat, it means, yes, to be raised up as a nation, but the root of this word means to go out, to go forth, to part with anything, or to take out anything. So what is among the people of humanity that we must separate from that which will allow us to be a living example of what is right and wrong. What is going on around us that we have to separate ourselves from humanity, to go forth, to, to take ourselves out of this society? What is it that is going wrong? Allah says in this verse that it is that we believe that will separate us. But we know that the root word of this word belief in Islam is always attached to action. So what are we doing, brothers and sisters, to act for freedom, justice, and equality? What are we doing, brothers and sisters, when it comes to using our voice, using our uh, unique capacity as individuals to make change? We must act together under the banner of belief, without judging one another over our differences, so that we may shoulder the mission of the Prophet وسلم, which is to establish a society of justice, freedom, and equality for all, all, regardless of creed, class, or color. This is the mission of Muhammad Again, Allah has said, as we close, we have made tribes, we have made nations. So, so you may know one another. Oh, you who believe, when you go forth to fight in Allah's way, make investigation and say not to anyone who offers you salutation. This is the greetings, assalamu alaikum. Say not to anyone who offers you salutation. You are not a believer seeking the good of this world's life. But with Allah, there are abundant gains Brothers and sisters, we are seeing in the Muslim world our brothers and sisters fighting. Who is Shia? Who is Sunni? One is calling one a believer, the other one is calling the other a disbeliever. They're fighting among each other, both saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, Allahu Akbar, and blowing up each other's masajid, their mosques. This is why we're searched when we come in here. So we know and you know that you are in a safe space. So that we know that we will not follow in the path of the old world of Islam. We will not separate ourselves, brothers and sisters, from the world of Islam. We will separate ourselves only by the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said we will separate ourselves. By having taqwa. By displaying the best for all humanity. We, brothers and sisters, are charged with that necessity in this time to remake and renew the Muslim world. It is time for a renewal. Takbir. And Allah has blessed us. Allah has truly blessed us with one in our midst, in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who is following in the footsteps of the prophets, fulfilling these realities that we see before us. Who in the Muslim world in America is now calling for more than a million to come together to establish justice? This is a common word, for we all are having injustices in our communities. No matter where we are coming from, we are having injustice. 
But who is it in the Muslim world, in this country or anywhere else, that is saying, let us lay down religion. Let us lay down our differences of color, of tribe, of class. Let us lay down all of these things that separate us as a human family and raise up the banner of justice and equality, freedom, which is Islam. If we understand where there's no justice, there is no peace, and peace means Islam, where are we left, brothers and sisters? So let us be among those who take it into our heart to establish a new world. Separation is sunnah. It is sunnah to separate ourselves from the injustices of society. We separate ourselves from the spiritual evils and moral injustices and persecution of Satan's world. It is the practice of the prophets, peace be upon them all, to separate themselves, not just physically, but spiritually from the world of injustice, so that we may stand and live, and live a life of security, a life of peace. So let us fall away from the evil machinations of a society that has been engineered by the enemy. And let us fall in love with one another as a Muslim family again. Let us fall in love with one another as a human family so that we may stand with Allah and his prophet. And that we may stand in this end times being able to say that we are among those among those who lifted your light, Ya Allah. That we are among those that have submitted to your will, Ya Allah. That we are among those that are fighting for Islam. For Allah has guaranteed that we as Muslims shall surely win. That the victory lies in the hands of that community that comes out of her that comes out of humanity and establishes and enjoins good and forbids evil and establishes it in a way that all of humanity can say but one thing, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Look at this beautiful representation of humanity. All I want to do is be a part of this. This is what I've said. May Allah forgive me if I've made any mistake. Let us now, inshallah, close in dua, and we will make our, inshallah, our obligatory two rakahs of Salatul Jum'ah. Inshallah, please repeat after me. Rabbana, atina, fi dunya, hasanatan, wa fil akhirati, hasanatan, wa qina, adhaban nar. O oh Allah, give us good in this life and good in the hereafter, and protect us from the fires of sin. Ameen. Wa aqeem as Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, hayya ala salati, hayya ala al falah, qad iqamati salatu, qad iqamati salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Insha'Allah, in the first raka'ah, we will recite Surah Al Asr to remind us of the time. And in the second raka'ah, we will recite Surah Al Nasr to remind us of the victory of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Ad-Din Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'een اهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين 
والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا ولك الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله الحمد لله this completes our obligatory portion of الصلاة الجمعة إن شاء الله at this point we will make تسبيح or ذكر we encourage our guests to join us in this short remembrance of Allah سبحانه وتعالى but we do understand that you must make it back